Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. As I have already discussed that the concept of the producer surplus is equal to that of the profit. And the profit is actually is the difference between the total revenue and the total cost. Now, how can we describe this type of this concept with the help of the uh, supply curve? Now, each and every point of the supply curve is representing the cost of the production. Now, the cost of the production and difference between the cost of production and the price, it is actually representing the area that is the producer surplus. The more the area, more the producer surplus and less the area means less of the producer surplus. For example, if the price is equal to this, as I have written the price, not so much a neat if the price has decreased from the p star to the p the producer surplus has been decreased from this whole area towards only this area it is means is simply the difference between the supply curve and the price that represents the producer surplus and the difference between the demand curve and the price that represents the concept of the consumer surplus now what do you mean by the market equilibrium now we have studied the concepts of the demand and the supply uh, separately now we are going to put together in order to form the uh, mark in the market and when we have put them together that represents the situation represents the market equilibrium and the market equilibrium is actually that's the theoretically where your demand curve is going to intersect the supply curve as your demand curve is negatively sloped and the supply curve is positively sloped when both of the curves are going to intersect at some point that point is going to result into the two situation one represents the equilibrium price that is on the x x uh, that is on the y axis and the other represents the equilibrium quantity that is going to be on the y axis the price that balances the price supply and the demand it means quantity demand becomes equal to the supply and in this state there is no shortage or the no surplus and it represents the steady it means an equilibrium state so this is your demand curve and this is the negatively sloped demand curve the other is the positively sloped demand curve and here is the point where they are going to intersect with each other this is the point where they are going to intersect with each other and it is going to represent the equilibrium point now the from the equilibrium point we have got two things one is the equilibrium price that is equal to seven the hypothetically the other one is the equilibrium quantity okay so it uh, this represents this represents the equilibrium quantity and this is going to represent the equilibrium price now this represents the equilibrium situation when the demand is equal to the supply but what happens if the price is too low it means if the price is lower than the equilibrium price then what does it result so this is the equilibrium price that is equal to 7 if the price is being low for example it is low by two dollars and it is equal to the five now what happens at this five as the price is being low the suppliers are going to supply less as the price is less we are going to demand more whenever the demand is greater than the supply it is going to result into the shortage whenever there is a shortage in the stage it means it, with the equilibrium price the price which is being prevalent in the market is lesser than the equilibrium price now what happens then when there is the uh, uh, there is the shortage of a good it, whenever, whenever there is the shortage of the good there is an inducement towards the suppliers to supply more whenever the price the supply more the price has been increased result is that we reduce the demand and next stage is that they in, also increases the supply we decrease the demand and the process continues until we reach at this point that is the equilibrium point like this if the price is too high but it means that instead of having the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity instead of having this and this we have an equilibrium price that is greater than the equilibrium price now you can see that uh, um, as the price is high the consumers are going to demand less and if the price as the price is high the producers are going to supply more now supply is greater than the demand and the difference between these two it represents the surplus whenever the supply is greater than the demand it represents the surplus of the production now what happens in this surplus of the production the suppliers tends to reduce the supply when they reduce the supply the price has been decreased it has got an impact on the decrease in the demand and then again again 
and the process continues until we reaches the equilibrium price like this so the market is automatically cleared uh, in the absence of any interventions if the market uh, interventions means now the third party is going to intervene into the market to create that surplus or to create that shortage if the shortage of the surplus is being created itself within the market then it is automatically itself is cleared no one has to intervene in the market in order to clear the surplus or to clear the shortage the market will be cleared by itself and it will it is going to retain its equilibrium point automatically okay what happen when someone is going to intervene in the market and when someone is going to intervene into the market it is mostly the government and government intervenes into the, into the market why because the market is not functioning properly whether the price charge is being, being too high or whether the price charge is being low in order to clear that uh, shortages or surpluses the government has to enter into the market and government can enter into the market in the form of the price restrictions now price restrictions are actually the price controls and the price controls are being levered by the government there are major two types of the price controls one are the price ceilings another one are the price floors now price ceiling means it is the legal maximum price that could be charged as a ceiling at its maximum height, so we can say it is the legal maximum price that could be charged and by floors we mean it is the legal minimum price that could be charged by the seller. So the government can impose price controls and the price controls are basically in two forms. One is the price ceilings and the other one are the price floors. So ceilings are the legal maximum price that could be charged and the price floors are the legal minimum price that could be charged. The examples of this price ceilings are the gasoline prices 1970s housing in New York City, or proposed restrictions on ATM fees, and the price floors are the minimum wage loss or the support prices which are being charged by the government in order to support the wheat, in order to support the sugar cane or the cotton. So impact of the price ceiling. So one thing you should always remember that ceiling is the legal maximum but it will always be effective whenever it is leveled below the equilibrium price that is the legal maximum it will be um, uh, feasible it will be uh, uh, very much clear that it will be uh, whenever it is being levered below the equilibrium price it will be binding in that case it will be effective in that case suppose this is the situation this is the equilibrium price and this is the equilibrium quantity if the ceiling is being levered over here it means it is effective because and the effective ceiling is always going to result into the shortage like this this is the shortage and price floor is always as the price of floor is the what if suppose if the ceiling is levered over here like this so if we suppose that the ceiling is levered below above the equilibrium price like this it will be not it sorry it will be not effective because of the fact that the price which is being prevalent in the market is already low below that of price so no one is going to bother about this price so it is always ineffective whenever it is levered above the equilibrium price it is always effective whenever it is laid below the equilibrium price and it always results into the shortage. So impact of the price floor. Now, in same is the case of the price floor. As the floor is the legal minimum price that could be charged. So it will be effective when it is levered above the equilibrium price like this. It will be effective in this case and it always results into the surplus but if a floor is being levered here it is below the equilibrium price then it will not be effective for example price floors can be um, uh, um, posed in case of the minimum wage loss or in case of the support price for example by the government it is being announced that the minimum wage law wage of uh, unskilled un uh, educated employees about three th thirteen thousand rupees. 
ओके सो दिस इज द पॉइंट दिस इज द इक्लेबर पॉइंट सो if a person or the labor union has gone to the government uh, by suggesting that that they, they are not able to meet their ends meet within the 13000 rupees you should put up a floor now suppose if the government has put up a floor of uh, about 12000 rupees which is below the equilibrium price then it will be not be acceptable by the labor because of the fact they will say that we are unable to make our ends meet within this 13000 rupees how can we meet uh, how can we manage ourselves within this 12000 rupees so the floor will be levered only above the equilibrium price for example that is equal to 15000 rupees then the floor will be effective so you should remember that the ceiling is the legal maximum but it will be effective when it is levered below the equilibrium price and the floor is the legal minimum and it will be acceptable it will be effective when it is levered above the equilibrium price the effective price ceiling always results into the shortage and the effective price floor always results into the surplus at this 15000 rupees labor are so going to supply the services more but at this 15000 salary the way, uh, industry is not going to hire them so they are going to supply more of the services but the uh, industry is going to hire less of the services the difference between these two represents the surplus so the comparative static analysis means how do the equilibrium price and the quantity change with the determinant of the demand or the demand or the supply is going to change like this so here i am going to draw something this is your negatively sloped demand curve and this one is positively sloped supply curve okay same is the case over here negatively sloped demand curve and positively sloped supply dry dry that good to do you can draw it by yourself too okay now what happen if in the first case if the demand is increased and supply is decreased in the second case as demand decrease and the supply is increased in the third case simultaneously demand is going to decrease supply is decreasing and here the both of the facts are increasing demand is increasing and supply is also increasing and this so this is the equilibrium price equilibrium quantity equilibrium price equilibrium quantity equilibrium price equilibrium quantity equilibrium price and This one is the equilibrium quantity. Now I'm going to change the color of the pen like uh, it's something blue. Okay, demand has been increased. When the demand has been increased, the demand curve is going to move up. Supply has been decreased. The supply curve has going to move in this direction. So this becomes the equilibrium price, and this becomes the equilibrium quantity. When the demand has been decreased, demand has been decreased. Demand curve is going to move in this direction. Supply has been increased. Supply curve is going to move in this direction. so this is the equilibrium price and this one is the equilibrium quantity if the demand has been decreased demand curve moves in this direction supply has been decreased it moves in this direction so it has been equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity if both of the curves things have been increased both of the curves moves out so this is the equilibrium quantity and equilibrium price so we can see that the changes in the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity if because of the any of the factor because of the wages because of the government regulation because of the any other thing if someone is something is going to change then the demand curve will move if the demand has been increased the demand curve is going to move out and the supply has been increased the plus supply is going to move out and vice versa and how it is going to move work in the real situation that example i'm going to discuss in the next section